sometimes the wrestling news you get in this game is just too sad. Cowabunga the Ninja Turtle has been released by Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Pour your hearts out, boys. Welcome to episode 33 of From Then To Now, the TEW 2020 save, where we take the World Wrestling Federation from 1992 all the way to the modern day. In this episode, we've got the go-home episode of Superstars before Saturday night's main event, 32. Which has got a big, big card, which we'll go into a little bit more in the actual show. So last week's show did really well, got us 85 overall, we're in the Tacoma Dome in the Northwest. For this show, we are in the Midwest in the Williams Arena. Which, ironically, the same region we were in for King of the Ring. So we're back there, but basically just sort of had a little bit of a loop around over the last four weeks. We're back in the Midwest. And so things we've announced for this show, we've got Undertaker versus Ric Flair in a big match. Also, last week we had the announcement of WAR coming in as a developmental territory replacing super world of sports i'm excited we've got brandy savage returning from his suspension it looks like it's gonna be pretty fun hogan needs to find a partner razor ramon we know is coming soon ultimate warriors challenge joko zuna for saturday night's main event you know you know what i'm excited for this show so let's get right into it and so, ladies and gentlemen, your opening match is a six-man tag team match pitting Bret Hart, Jim Neidhart, and the British Bulldog against Lex Luger and Shawn Michaels of the Horsemen and the Mountie of the Hart First Family. It's a 66 overall. We got straight into the match, but the thing to notice is despite his suspension being over, Randy Savage is still absent he is not on commentary for this show and the match itself gets a 76 as brett taps out the mountie brett gets a 97 sean gets a seven an 80 mountie is 75 a 76 for bulldog this i see title picture is looking very healthy going into SummerSlam, but it's a good match, goes 16 minutes. Luger and Jim are the weak links as we expect, but also you'll notice the Hart Foundation. The Hart family may end up changing its name to the First Family just because, well, having two Hart things is complicated, let's be honest here. I don't think. I mean, I don't think it's, just, it's unfair to say that having two factions which both feature the name Hart could get a little bit confusing. Gets a 76 rating though, good stuff. And we then get Sergeant Slaughter with Gene Oakland. And they're announcing the next elimination match. And it's going to be the bottom two are Paul Levesque and Scotty Riggs. They will fight off at Saturday night's main event. The loser goes home. 82 racing, not too bad. We get a promo with the Bushwhackers. They challenge the Beverly Brothers to a tag team match next week. You know, Beverly Brothers attacked them last week, or the week before, I can't remember which one it was, but we're going to get a match between the four next week. 47 rating, good stuff. Tag team action. Fuji Goons, Toshi Kojima and Yoshinari Agawa take on Skinner and Rick Martel, a random team, just because I didn't want the pun at the penalty of having two unimportant teams. It's as simple as that. Fuji you know, Kojima and Agawa, so much fun to use. Agawa, one of the best junior heavyweights of all time. I'd argue Kojima, one of the best heavyweights of all time in 
Pure Rezu. Pure Rezu, Pure Pure. But either way, to have them in the WWF, because it's still baffling to me that both of their dojos just went, well, All Japan just decided not to renew Agawa. New Japan decided not to renew Kojima. And I was just like, I'll take them. I will happily take these two. Kojima picks up the win here, the sit-out spinebuster. We still haven't given these a tag team finisher. So that's actually going to be my question for you in the comments today. What should Fujigun's tag team finisher be? It's Kojima and it's Agawa. What could we do give them a fun tag team finisher? Hey, and the one I like the best will be put into the game. This is also going to be where I ask you guys to subscribe. For daily TEW 2020 content, we had the experiments return yesterday with the dream promotion. There'll be more coming back. The New Japan save will be coming back at some point. Plus, of course, from then to now, our main save will be the most consistent thing on this channel. I'm excited for what's going forward, and I hope you guys join me on this journey, so please do subscribe. And Mike McGurk comes in to interview... High Voltage, no, Fujigoon even, and High Voltage jump them from behind. Owen Hart and Coco Beware jump Fujigoon. And it, it leads to a big brawl. Agents get, agents get separated out, pulled apart. Pretty big. 46 rating. Mike McCurk has hilariously been a part of this story since the night after, since the superstars after WrestleMania. I'm excited. Vince McMahon, as an announcer, he's basically doing the old AWA stuff where they used to have their announcers hype up the upcoming shows. And he announces that at Saturday Night Main Event, there is going to be a special WAR match. And he has Tenryu with him. And yeah, basically it's just to let you know, we are going to be doing a war match at Saturday Night's Main Event just to... Basically, just to make this whole partnership thing realistic. We know we're getting Wrestle Dream next April. But this isn't a one-time thing. These are an actual subsidi subsidiary, subsidiary promotion to us. Where they are helping and they are part of the WWF family now. With joint promotions. And we want to treat them as such. Joint promotions will probably get a lot of feature going into SummerSlam. Trust me. It's an 88 rated match. A segment though. Vince McMahon. Is a great promo. The Powers of Pain continue their run to the Tag Team Championships as they take on the Smoking Guns. The Barbarian picks up the win with the Kick of Fear, but it's Samu who interferes against the Guns. So, you know, now the Guns have a bit of a issue with the Islanders, Samu and Fatu. Gives them a little storyline to go into over the next month. Because, you know, SummerSlam, one of the big four, there's going to be a lot of matches on that card. 52 rating. We can get what's supposed to be a match. So Repo Man comes out to a match and the referee walks out. It's Shane Stevens, the referee who Repo Man shoved and attacked, assaulted last week. And basically, he walks out, refusing to referee a Repo Man match. And the match is called off. Because, well, without a referee, there's not much really they can do. It's 52 rating though, good stuff. As such, we get a quick replacement match. Kama comes out, takes on the Samoan Savage. They were just two people. In kayfabe, we will say these are two people who were just out in the gorilla position, who are willing to fight each other, who didn't don't really like each other. And hilariously, they have great chemistry. Love that. <laughs> but Kama picks up the win. Death Alley Driver, just over 10 minutes. I think it's the longest Kama match, not counting the King of the Ring stuff. So, progress. Kama's not as unbeatable as he was when he started. 60 rating, though. Good, good stuff. We then get a Fuji Goon and Ultimate Warrior back and forth promos. Pre recorded promos which are edited together. Fuji Goon is. Fuji is essentially saying Warrior is a stepping stone for Yokozuna's greatness. Yokozuna will put down the Warrior 
at Saturday Night's Main Event and then go on and end Hulkamania at SummerSlam. Warrior is basically saying, Yokozuna, you are nothing more than the monster of the week. You will lose at Saturday Night Main Event and then I will go on. I've proven I can beat Hogan. Hogan knows he Hogan knows he's going to struggle to beat me. And he's my friend now. We are friends. We are allies, so to speak. But that does not mean I'll take things any lighter on him. Just like you, Yokozuna. I will put you down and I will put Hogan down. And Ultimate Warrior will leave SummerSlam as the WWF Heavyweight Champion. And the spirit of the Ultimate Warrior will live forever. 94 rating. Good stuff. We go into the main event, which gets an 81, which makes sense because of the booking. The match goes into chaos. It's a draw. It's a no contest. Flair gets a 95. Undertaker gets an 82. But the reason this match goes into chaos is because of Savage and Hogan coming in, attacking both guys. Obviously, the, yeah, the finish is going to be penalised. I reckon it probably got an 86 if it wasn't for the finish. Which, this also does leave things open for a rematch in the future. But, Hogan and Savage have reunited. Savage is out of retirement. He will fight The Undertaker and Flair at... Saturday night's main event. And that is our main event for the Saturday night's main event. It's the Mega Powers returning against Taker and Flair. It's a 100 rated final segment. What do we get overall? It's an 85. Good stuff. But as I always say, I don't care what that rating is. If there, if there was a way that, I wouldn't, didn't, that it didn't get rated, I would absolutely do that. But the game's going to game. But what did you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of this episode. Are you excited for Saturday night's main event? Hell, I will leave the I will leave the match card for Saturday night main event in the comments, and you can leave your predictions. But whatever whatever you think is going to happen, whatever you thought of this episode, I'm, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a thumbs up if you did, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.